Welcome to PC Wits Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at part two of my review of the Diamond HD5850 ATI Radeon card. Now here is the chart that we looked at in part one. As you can see, very, very similar to the 5870 and lots of things except for the clock speeds, really. So we can overclock this from the defaults, but let's run some benchmarks with my test system here, starting off with the default clock speeds, okay? So the default, like I mentioned in part one, 725 core, one gigahertz memory. In 3D Mark Vantage, you can see here the GPU score of 13256, okay? And these are the frame rates from the scores that we've got here, okay? And how does this stack up? Well, I also ran 3D Mark 06 just to compare and ran it again with 4890 and other HD cards and basically when we look at the GPU score you can see here that the 5850 is better than a few of these models all the way up to being close to the 4870X2 actually so a dual GPU very very close to a dual GPU not there yet of course if we had two of these 5850s it would beat all of them uh, running some benchmarks here on very high settings always I have the AA anti-aliasing up to 8 or 4 here's Far Cry 2 with the results that I've got the average frames per second and the maximum Stalker Clear Sky also in ultra high settings you can see here Batman I installed the latest Batman game and there you go there are some awesome results there very super smooth action happening there when I was playing this not bad at all and also I installed um, the uh, Left 4 Dead 2 that just came out there's uh, there's a demo out so I downloaded that one and um, got some terrific results from that one also I overclocked uh, the card and then reran my benchmarks with it overclocked as well because I wanted to see how far I could take this right we know that the 4870 uh, was good at overclocking the 5850 is terrific for overclocking. I overclocked it to match basically the clock speeds of the 5870. So basically, um, no problems there. I, I also ran this new Haven benchmark that supports DirectX 11 now. So um, that's going to be my new benchmarks for DirectX 11 for now. As you can see, this screenshot here, that's DirectX 10. Okay, so when I run the benchmarks on DirectX 11, look at the difference. You can see now the uh, the stones, everything, it's more realistic. It comes out, it pops out at you. It's not flat. In DirectX 10, for example, this road would be completely flat instead of the bumpy rocks sticking out. So really, really cool stuff with DirectX 11, the tessellation, the shader model, all of that new support. These are the results, of course, that I'm getting uh, with this first DirectX 11 card that I've got as soon as I get more new games more cards will do some more benchmarks here's some other benchmarks like from grid racing so just for your reference you can see here the frames per second the average and the max and also uh, our crisis of course here's the uh, enthusiast ultra high settings uh, 8AA and uh, also when overclocking this thing you can overclock it in two ways you can use the ATI Overdrive utility and just let it auto-tune it. And then it uh, gave me a nice um, result here of 775 megahertz and 1115 uh, megahertz for the memory. And then you can run GPU-Z and monitor the temperatures also, monitor the max and the min. And as you can see, at full load, 55 degrees Celsius was the max. That's pretty darn good considering the uh, amount of overclocking that I did on here. The other way that you can overclock it is using the AMD GPU clock tool. And that's what I used to overclock this to be basically like a 5870. Okay, so 850 megahertz for the core, 1200 um, megahertz for the uh, memory clock, that's uh, 4800 defectively there. Um, and uh, increase the voltage, of course, uh, maximum, set the clock, and away you go. Run some benchmarks again here and uh, use the MSI afterburner uh, utility to uh, monitor and set the fan speed so I'm running benchmarks in the background full load 100% super high settings and um, monitoring the uh, the temperature readings of course which did not go over 57 degrees Celsius 
when I um, made this at 850 megahertz core 1200 uh, for the memory so terrific card for overclocking I was so happy with the results on that one definitely an awesome card and it's a hundred dollars cheaper than the 5870 so imagine the stuff that you can do with this card right if you have all the latest DirectX 11 games when they come out three monitors wow terrific so I'd like to thank Diamond for providing it and I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching